think I should be live. Pop out the chat. Waiting for you all to come on in as usual. Excuse me. Sure. Hey, Katina. So it is. Hey, Barry Vu. Valentina Rose. Annette. Sweet great mom from Philly. Okay, so let's get this started. I'm waiting for more of you to come on in. Yes, you read the title correctly. You see this picture? Yes, I uh, hate Alan, Alan's B. Okay, now she Alan's B, she used to work for the U the UN, I believe. So she says this is one of the many health initiatives I've worked on in Africa besides FGM. Oh, thank you, Annette. So, as you can see from the title, I'm talking about a practice today called breast ironing that I did not know until recently happens in Africa. Okay, it's buffering a little bit. So, I'm surprised, I'm surprised, but not surprised. Give me one second, y'all, while y'all, more of you come on in. Waiting for more of you to come on in. So like I said, Yes, everybody get those likes up. I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. Now I have my notes. Now some of my subscribers have mentioned this practice of breast ironing and I had never heard of that before. So I had to see about it for myself and read, read up on it. And I crave the truth and the truth can be painful. So I've mentioned before that, you know, many pro-black soldier women should leave this country who always complain, go to Africa or something. And, you know, because they don't like anybody. And we I'm not even going to get into that. So um, what I'm going to say, this is not a video to single out all African men. Um, I've dated an African men. Now, some might debate, are they really African? Yes, they are. It's in Africa. Okay, an East African and a North African. And I'll leave it at that. Now... It's been suggested to date African men. Like I said, don't be delusional. Just because they're considered a part of the black race means nothing. Any man you deal with from a different culture than you, you need to learn about his culture and particularly, and particularly when it comes to the practices culturally towards women. You need to know, has he, does he believe in some of the things, the practices that still go on towards women that can be abusive or not? such as FGM, which is widespread over Africa, also in Indonesia, also in parts of the Middle East. Um, some places and some places it's not. We know that's when they literally mutilate and cut up your vagina three ways. They can either take everything away, the lips, the clitoris, cut with the razors, and Cola Booth revealed on the Pink Pills channel that um, sometimes after they sew you up so tightly on the wedding night, the man has to get a razor and cut you open. And then they sew you back up after that to make sure that you are being pure. And people didn't believe it. I read about it. It is true. That does happen. FGM is something that needs to be banned worldwide. And some countries have banned it. People still do it under the radar. 
I believe there needs to be a jail sentence or the death penalty when they do this. So if you want to go to Africa for a husband, the women that do, remember it is a society of patriarch. The men rule. You need to find out what is practice because you don't want to destroy your daughter's lives when you marry in with the men and this is what their tribe does. You find out what do they do, what do they believe in. So, what I have read is sickening and heartbreaking. My first reaction is arrest the women, beat them, do something to them, the mothers. Then when I find out, found out why they do it, it makes it more heartbreaking. About the it tells the volume and the lengths women will go for protection, and and it shows what they will do because of the ongoing suppression of women's sexuality, and the guilt many feel simply for being born a woman in a male-dominated society, where clearly there is a problem with the men when it comes to them acting like vultures and being barbaric. It's not just Africa; it's many parts of the world. But clearly there is a problem where you have to go to the length of ironing your daughter's breasts when she hits puberty so you can protect her. I am going to show you three articles. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about breast ironing, where it happens, what it is. I'm going to show you it also happens in the UK, England, Europe. The African women that go over there. And I'm going to show you some of the laws of where this happens the most. Those of you who are interested in going in parts of Africa. Because, like I said before, the white man, as you say, is literally protecting you over here. Where you go into a nation run by black African men. And you are peace of property and you have no protection now that doesn't mean they're all going to abuse you but we're going to get into it okay hold on y'all all right i'm going to pull up these articles give me one second Let's see. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to pull up this article. Be prepared to be just saddened for what, what you hear. Hmm. Now, I cannot see what y'all are saying in this chat right now. Okay. Let's get into it. Let me pull up this on my phone. See what y'all are saying. Before I read you what's going on, the articles of what's happening in Africa, that's affecting 3.8 million black little African girls and um, women, but mainly girls. And that means up until the age of 18. Okay. The sad reasons mothers in Africa in these African communities, iron their daughter's breast. It says they want to protect their daughters. They want to protect their daughters, but breast ironing is more harmful than helpful. For many girls around the world, the onset of puberty represents a time of uncertainty and anxiety because their bodies change. 
3.8 million girls around the world, that anxiety turns into anguish at the start of adolescence with a practice called breast ironing. When girls start showing signs of puberty, mothers begin ironing their breasts using heated tools like stones, spatulas, and things to pound or massage their breast in an attempt to prevent them from developing. I repeat, the mothers use heated stones, heated spatulas in an, in, to attempt to keep them from developing. It's known as breast flattening or breast sweeping to prevent their breasts from growing. They also wrap bandages tightly around their chest. Breast ironing like female mutilation is a practice that has been um, done, perpetuated for the good of girls. They have found that it is practiced in Chad, Africa, Guyana, Guyana Bissau, Togo, and Benin, but it's most common in Cameroon, where nearly a quarter, about 25%, of girls and women have had their breast iron. Cases have also been reported in the UK as many as 1,000 girls from West African immigrant communities. Though breast ironing is intended to protect them from unwanted sexual advances, the practice is physically and emotionally traumatic. Okay. So they might heat that up in a fire and then come and put that on your breasts. Now, we already know how sensitive our breasts usually is. So can you imagine the pain of them doing this to you? Now, the breast ironing process itself is painful. It will make a girl feel ashamed about their bodies. It is actually ineffective because it doesn't stop breasts from developing. Though it's not exclusively performed by mothers on their daughters, it's usually carried out by a girl's mother or a female relative. However, in some cases, the girl iron their own breast. The heated tools leave scars and wounds making them vulnerable to infections and cause complications later in life. Some of the women whose breasts have been ironed said they had trouble producing milk to breastfeed their children. So, by ironing their daughter's breasts, mothers in Cameroon hope to make their daughters less sexually attractive to men. Okay, to stop early marriage and pregnancy and keeping them in school. Because again, they fear early pregnancy, marriage, or rape. Now, reportedly 38% of children, 38% of children in Cameroon are married by the time they're 18 years old. More than a quarter of adolescent girls are mothers, and 20% of them drop out of school after getting pregnant. Believe me, we're going to get into this. So this girl said, when my breast started to grow, people in my house began talking. She was as she's 28 now. She says eventually my mom decided to iron my breasts. If we don't iron them, it will attract men. And that means pregnancy. So I suppose she meant well. This is insane. Okay. Though the mothers may have had good intentions, breast ironing is unlikely to address the larger systemic, systemic problems they are hoping to solve. Violence against women and gender inequality. Rather than trusting men to respect women's bodies and their choices, they believe they must make their daughters less attractive to protect them. 
when the girls and women are seen as equals and are empowered to make choices for themselves, choices that are respected by those around them, the need to protect girls from breast ironing will be eliminated. Some of the victims have made it their mission to educate women in Cameroon about this. Okay. Then, now it says, okay. Hold on, let me see what's going on in this chat. All right. It says, dozens of girls in the UK, England, London, and stuff have been subjected to breast ironing. Can you imagine someone heating up something on the fire and putting it on your breast? Yes, Vanetta. Vanetta says, hey, I have a theory. How about you punish the men for violating the girls? You would think this would be common sense, but this is a problem globally where the women are always punished for everything. And we're going to get into that. So it says, perpetrators consider it a traditional measure to stop unwanted male attention. This is crazy. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, let's see. Community workers in London, Yorkshire, Essex, and the West Midlands have told The Guardian cases where preteen girls from several African countries are subjected to the painful, abusive, and futile practice. Okay, let's see. Mar Margaret, she's head of the diaspora group, the Cane Women. Okay, it's estimated that 1,000 women and girls in the UK have been subjected to this. Okay. Another community activist who wishes not to be named said she was aware of the 15 to 20 percent cases in Croton alone, Croton, Croton in England, I'm, I believe. It's usually done in the UK, not abroad like female genital mutilation, FGM. Mothers, aunties, and grandmothers will use a hot stone to massage across the breast repeatedly to break the tissue, to slow its growth. Thank you, Vincent. Okay, sometimes they do it once a week or every two weeks, depending on how it comes back. They believe it's a traditional measure to protect the girls from unwanted sexual male attention, sexual harassment and rape. Medical experts say that this is child abuse, which can lead to physical and psychological scars, infections, and the inability to breastfeed, deformities, and breast cancer. The United Nations describe it as one of five global unreported crimes relating to gender-based violence. Okay, one woman said in England, she ironed her daughter's breast. She said, I took the stone, I warmed it, and then I massaged it. The stone was hot. She said, mommy is hot. She developed bruising. She was questioned by the police, but then released by the police. Okay. She says, another woman who's Somalian said, um, that she's seen this at the hospital. She says these were British women, British citizens. She says one woman became flat chested as a result of the practice. She kept saying, I have a boy's chest, but no one has ever questioned her about it. No one physically checked her. Checked her. Okay. All right. Police say they have no allegations, okay. They suspect it's happening in the UK, but you know, all right. One of the police officers said, if I knew it was happening, I would do something about it. Prosecutions are important. People have to recognize these practices for what they are, child abuse. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do before I talk about Cameroon, let's get into this. Hold on, let me see this chat. All right. All right. Okay. So I read you two articles about it. Disgusting. All right. So these women are doing it. My first reaction again is arrest these mothers. They still should be arrested, but the reasons that they are doing it is because they want to protect their girls. They want to make their bodies ugly and give them a boy's chest and take away their breasts so that they're not attractive to the opposite sex so they don't end up pregnant and, and married early which only speaks volumes about their culture because um well i didn't know she would just end up pregnant because she has breasts does she doesn't she have a say so over her own body now this happens mostly in cameroon africa All right, so the first article, it's, I took a few notes. Let's go over it. It says that it affects 3.8 million African girls. Um, again, can you imagine the pain of having these hot things put on your breast to prevent your daughter's breast from developing during puberty so that the men from their community don't look at them, don't rape them, don't force marry, I guess, or something? Boys and girls are supposed to look at each other as human nature, but this is a nation that's not the United States. We're going to get into that. So breast flattening or breast sweeping, and they also put bandages all around their breasts. Again, this happens in Chad, Guyana, Bissau, but it's most common in Cameroon, Africa. For the delusional ones who always talk about mama Africa and like we just gonna go over there and marry and you ain't thinking about none of this. Nearly 25% have had, had it done. So not only do you have to worry about your, your vagina being cut off, now you have to worry about your breasts being flattened with hot coals to prevent unwanted sexual advances or being raped yourself as unattractive physically as it says um some of these women can't even breastfeed their own babies because of this this is a dis this is a disgrace so they fear early pregnancy again marriage or rape and now you see why they say education is needed globally okay a moral cleanup needs to happen so i always thought it would be common I, I just don't get certain parts of the world i really don't i don't understand after this long of humans being on the earth you still haven't evolved how are you for example you thousands of little girls who got pregnant at 12 have fistulas can't control their bowel movements because of the whole dying because of childbirth. I would think that after you keep seeing this happen, something would click in your community's mind like, huh, they shouldn't be giving birth at 12. Their bodies aren't developed. I mean, we keep seeing the disaster. You would think something would go off in their head, right? To stop. You would think that the stories of FGM cutting up girls' vaginas. They can't have pleasure with their husbands. They can't have a normal period, have to have them through a straw. Don't get me started if they have a large lining. All of that stuff are going heavy. They have no pads, no tampons. They have nothing. Their vaginas is not normal. They have scarring. They are a lot of weight when they cut off their clit, which has to be one of the most painful experiences a, a woman probably or a girl can ever experience. And now you are ironing breast. So clearly there is a problem with parts of humanity. And I have to say it because I have to. Where's the white man? Because he's not there. 
for those that love to blame him for everything. Well, this is a black nation. Where are they at? So, I'm making a point. Those that love to blame him for everything, and he did this, and he did that. He ruined all Africans and black people. He's not over there where the women have gone to these links to keep their daughters safe from their own so-called men. So, it said 38% are married by the time they're 18. That is better than being 12 and 15 years old, being forced, forced to marry. And I was curious. Yes, get those likes up. I was very curious to know, well, what is the religion over here? What are you, are they lacking something with God to be doing this? But no, 70% are Christian. The main religion is Christianity, Islam, and their traditional faiths, but 70% is Christian. Then I said, are there any laws even protecting women in Cameroon where this is largely practiced? The answer is no. And we're going to look at the, the, some of these laws. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's look at some of these laws. Okay. Let's look at these laws. Africa for women's rights. Cameroon. Okay, so they had some laws for women from 1994, 2005, and 2006. They did not ratify these laws, meaning they took away some of these laws. Let's look. Hmm. <laughs> Cameroon, Cameroon, Africa. Okay. Their laws remain deeply discriminatory towards women despite recommendations made by, you know, the government and stuff in 2000 or 2009. Okay. So here are some of the laws. Those of you that want to go to Africa and Cameroon, like I said, you better find out before you go. All right, so adultery is punishable if committed by a woman. It's only punishable by a man when it's habitual or takes place in their home. So if he's sleeping with other women outside, literally, it's fine. But the woman will always be punished. Abortion is criminalized except if her life is in danger or the result of a rape. Rape is against the law unless it takes place in the marriage. I repeat, rape is against the law unless it takes place in the marriage, meaning your husband is allowed to rape you. That can be in the ad anally as well. Tear you apart, bleeding, screaming, and he will not go to jail because he's your husband. So he's allowed to rape you. Okay. Civil code. All right. The minimum age for marriage is 15 for a girl, 18 years old for a boy. The girls under the age of 18 are not required to consent to the marriage. Your parent is allowed to give you away for marriage if you're under 18. You don't have a say. The man gets to choose what kind of marriage he wants, monogamy or polygamy. If no choice is made, the couple is married under common law, which allows polygamy and community of mar martial property. And they have dowries. So your husband gets to decide if he'll just be with you or multiple wives. You don't have a say if uh, you are down for that or not. The husband is considered to be the head of the family, which is okay. But it says that um, he has the sole right to determine the family, family dosmil and the interests of the household and the children. And he may prevent his wife from taking employment. Um, the woman is not entitled to the full use in, in the enjoyment of property. The husband has the right to issue out property, giving him the right to sell or mortgage the couple's property without his wife's consent. 
Okay. Let's see. Early and forced marriages is widespread, especially in the rural areas. Girls as young as 12 are married. Okay. And the widows are forced to marry the brother of the dead husband because the widow is still considered property to the husband, even if he died. Only male children are permitted to inherit property. So if your husband dies, you are forced to marry his brother because you're still the property of the brother, even though he is dead. Okay. Violence against women and girls is highly prevalent, especially within the family and is socially accepted. Being raped by your husband is not a criminal offense. The government has not established shelters or legal aid clinics for the victims who suffer from this. So if you're bleeding profusely or whatever from the rape, there's no clinic to help you after what your husband did. Okay, there are no laws pr prohibiting FGM when they chop up your vagina. There are no laws against it or breast ironing. 20% of women are victims. They adopted laws against trafficking and selling off kids as sex slaves in 2005. But trafficking and prostitution of the little black African girls remains widespread in their nation. Ain't no white man selling them all. That's their own people. What y'all got to say? Y'all know who you are who have that mentality. Okay. All right. Um All right, the reading. Um It says all the labor laws guarantee gender equality. Um women are still employed mainly in the uh, you know, household jobs and agriculture. So they're usually excluded from social security benefits. Furthermore, sexual harassment in the workplace is very common and it's not punishable by law. Okay. So you have no protection from workplace sexual harassment. There's no law against it. Um, the HIV rate, usually the women get it more as usual. But if he has multiple wives, he's effing men, gets HIV, and then spreads it all around the wives. Okay. The child mortality rate is a little high because of the lack of care, the bad, they don't have good hospitals all the time. And the abortions are usually not good. Okay. All right. Okay. Hmm. So I just read you some of the laws of the Cameroon nation. So to go over it really quick again, raping your wife is not against the law. And that includes probably anally raping her. Adultery, the woman is always punished. The man is only if this, he's a habitual one and it does it is in his home okay the minimum age again is 15 to marry for a girl 18 for a boy if you're under 18 as a girl you have you don't have to have a consent your parent can decide for you the man will get to choose if he wants monogamy or polygamy you don't have an opinion or a say in it if you want to you know just um the husband sets gets to decide if you work. I think that, I mean, if he can provide and he's making enough money, okay. But either way, he gets to decide. Women are not allowed any kind of property. Forced marriages is common, especially for 12-year-olds. And if you are a widow, you are still the property of your husband, even if he has died and you are forced to marry his brother. Only male children are given property. The violence towards the girls and women is still high and it is socially accepted in their nation. There is no shelters or clinics for abuse of the wives. 20% have FGM. And they are still trafficking and having sex slaves of the children in the nation. And it's accepted. 
sexual harassment is common in the workplace, there's no laws to punish it. The women are excluded from social security benefits. And that's it. All right. So this is not to, because I know what people will say, this is an educational video. You, we need to know what's happening in the world, in Africa too, and not live under delusion, being a completely delusional person. And playing the whole white man this, white man that, well, it ain't no white man there. And you see what I just read you. I hope you reflect on the rights that's given to you over here by white men. Those of you, like I said, it is great for some to just leave. But you should know what practices are done in certain areas that you're going to. So what I want to say leaving is a prayer for them. Dear God, please protect the Cameroon girls. Please reach the hearts of these mothers to stop doing this. Please make their men, if, if they're vultures or barbaric, whatever's happening, Please change it. Give them protection. Please let people have to be a reflection of God again. People say they believe. Well, God would not agree with mutilating girls. There needs to be some type of change. If you fear marriage and pregnancies and rape and you have to go to those links, it's telling the world there is something wrong, that you have to do this. Please, God, put it in them, in them to love being women, to love their breasts to love their development, to not feel ashamed that their laws and their men that run the nation will learn to love women and understand I came from a woman who birthed me, who nurtured me, who loves me, who was given birth to my children, and I have daughters, and I don't want them to, this to happen to them. Empathy. Please, God, put it in this nation worldwide to make changes to protect girls from FGM and any other practices that harm them literally and cause psychological and pain in their hearts and souls forever. Please, Lord, fix it. In the name of Jesus, amen. So that's what I have to say. I hope this was an educational video. I want to hear what you're saying in the comment section. I know this is shocking to many of you. I did not know that this practice was going on until just yesterday. So. We have to accept the truth. I can't wait to read your comments on this. Bye, everyone.